I'd like to do is kind of pick up where we left off yesterday and start with going around the x-axis, just to make sure we have that in our mind, even though we did just go over a problem. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to take, for sure, graph what you're looking at. And for each part, part A, B, C, and D, you really want to take and draw a separate graph for each one. Okay? Because like we looked at yesterday, some of them turned out to be more like that dog dish kind of idea, and some of them were like that Hershey kiss that was upside down or sideways or whatever. You know, so um, what I'm going to do is start with part A going around the x-axis. So this is like yesterday. They give us the equation y equals the square root of x. Of course, that starts here at 0 and kind of goes up like this. Then we have the line y equals 2. Well, that's a horizontal line that goes right here where y is 2. And then they said, um, and x equals 0 as well. x equals 0 happens to be this vertical line right here. And so you can see, especially with the colors like that, and, and in fact, you might want to, as you're doing these, kind of use different colors um, so that, you know, you know what's on the top, what's on the bottom. You know, you don't have to keep looking over to your equations. And you'll see what I mean by that when we get to some of these others. But right here, this is the region that they want us to take and rotate around the x-axis. So in part A, we're going to take this and rotate around the x-axis. So if I rotate this around the x-axis, are my cross-section circles or washers? What do you think? Circles or washers? Is the graph flush up against the x-axis? No, what does that mean? It means washers, right? So we know that we have washers. If we have washers, that means we're going to be using the formula pi times big R squared minus little r squared. So I have to identify what would big R and what would little r be. Okay. Big R is whatever's furthest away from the x-axis. So which of these graphs is furthest from the x-axis? What do you think? y equals 2 or y equals square root of x? y equals 2. This blue line is further away than what the red part is, right? So y equals 2. So we can just put the 2. We don't need the y equals there. Our little r is what's closest to the x-axis, since our x-axis is what we're going around. So that would be the square root of x, right? All right, so now we start looking at this and saying, all right, to find the volume, we need to integrate the area. The area here, this is our area formula, is pi, we pull that out front, big R squared. What's 2 squared? Not a trick. <laughs> 4. And then square root of x squared. x. dx. Okay, now. Finally, we have to look at what values we're integrating between. It's starting here at 0, right? And it's going over to that spot right in there. So I have to figure out what that spot is. Where is it that the square root of 2, or sorry, the square root of x equals 2? Square both sides. I get x equals 4. So that point right there has an x value of 4. What would the y value of that point be? 2. Just plug it in to either one of these, or you can see that it's 2 from the blue line, right? So I'm going to choose the x value here, which is 4. So this is going to evaluate from 0 to 4. Now this part from here down is really not my big concern. I mean, yeah, that's what gets you the correct answer. But this up here is what was new this week, okay? Now anything below this is not so new. We find the antiderivative. 
evaluate from 0 to 4, and multiply by pi. So we have pi, top minus bottom. Bottom here is going to be a nice little 0. Plugging the 4 in, I get 16 minus 8, so 8 pi units cubed. Bless you. All right, so any questions on that right there so far? All right, so now you ready for the next thing. Part B says the y-axis, okay? So part B, y-axis. What you need is you need to draw that picture again. So you have your square root of x. your y equals 2, you have your x-axis, and what we know from doing that other problem is that this is the point 4, 2. Okay. Now think about if you're going to rotate around the y-axis. All right. Mirror image of this thing would come over here, right? It's rotating around in this direction a little tornado kind of thing, right? Or a Hershey kiss upside down. Alright? If you go around the y-axis, that means you can't use the equations as y equals. They have to be x equals. Okay? Just like when we found area and we turned your graph a little bit so that you could look at it to see what was on the top and what was on the bottom. Okay? With that right there, we had to take and change it so that we were integrating y's instead of x's. So one thing to note is this equation right here would be x equals y squared if I got y by itself. Or sorry, x by itself. Square both sides, you'd have y squared equals x or x equals y squared. So any equations you have, you would have to solve for x equals. The other graph you had that was x equals was this right here that was given. If you remember earlier in the problem, they mentioned x equals 0. Okay, now, do you see how this black shaded region right here is flush up against that? Okay, so if I'm going to go this way, going around the y-axis, I have cross-sections of what? Circles. Okay, so first I want to say I have circles. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So half your battle right here is recognizing, is it a washer or is it a circle, and which equation am I going to use? If it's a circle, pi r squared. If it's a washer, it's pi big r squared minus little r squared. Okay, so that's the first thing you're identifying. Next thing I need to know is, in the other one, we needed to know big R and little r. and this one, we only need to know little r. Okay, so look at what the radius of this would be. The radius of this base right here would be from here to here. Or if it, my cross section was, he, was here, it'd be from here to here. Right? So do you see how it keeps going over to this graph right here? That graph is the one that's responsible for the radius. If you need to turn your picture to see it, you know, the other way, that's fine too. You may do that. But that means our radius here has to do with this. It's y squared. Since I'm going around the y, I can't choose this right here. I have to use this equation. So going around the y-axis or any vertical line, okay, because the y-axis is a vertical line, anytime I go around any vertical line at all, I have to have the equation solved for x. If I'm going around any horizontal line, including the x-axis, I'm going to have the equation solved for y. Okay? So then from there, I just set it up. I have volume equals pi r squared, y squared squared, dy. Now, what values go here 
have to be wise. So what wise is this going between from here to here? What do you think? From here to here, what y's are we talking about? What y is here? Zero. And what y's up here? Two. So it's going from zero to two. So for this right here, I could clean this up just a little bit and say y to the fourth dy. And then integrate it. That part's not new. y to the fifth over five. Evaluated from zero to two and then multiplied by pi. Top minus bottom ends up giving me 32 over 5 pi units cubed. Right? Because 2 to the 5th is 32, and 0 to the 5th is 0. Right? Did my answers come out the same? 32 pi over 5, 8 pi. No. We're talking about two different pictures, aren't we? I mean, if you look at that guy up there versus this guy down here, they're two very different pictures. If you want me to finish the drawing of this, I could take and go like this and go like this, you know, to show that my cross sections are actually washers. Okay. So that is x-axis and y-axis. Right? Those are the most commonly asked ones for calculus, for AP. Okay? But now, let's attempt a horizontal line, y equals 2. Okay? That was part C of this problem. Part C. Um, y equals 2 is what you're going to go around. So, let's get this picture back up here. We have y equals the square root of x. We have y equals 2. We have x equals 0, so we have this section right here. So this time, we are going to go around this y equals 2 right here. This is what we're rotating around. Can you picture what it will look like? you think? Reflected over that line. Get up a little bit more there. Is it flush up against what I'm going around? Yeah. That means cross sections will be what? Circles. That means my area formula is going to be pi r squared. So I need to figure out R. And this is the toughest part. Okay? So pay super duper close attention. My radius happens to go from here to there or from here to there, right? So I have to somehow come up with something that means that. Alright? Are you ready? Everybody ready? I need to take and figure out what this is first, and then I need to subtract off what this is second. Won't that leave me with that? Right? So this thing is 2, right? Minus what's underneath this. It's always what's under. You know, and that's the thing that's hard. If you need something above, you have to take it all the way from up here minus this in order to get that that's in between. So this part here is square root of x, so minus square root of x. That's the hardest part of this problem. The rest is done the same. But the hardest part is seeing that radius. So to find that radius, we took this whole thing and subtracted off whatever was under it, the white space. We had to get rid of the white space that was under it because that's not included in that shaded space. Okay? So the whole thing minus the white space. 
From here then, we end up integrating this thing still from 0 to 4. We're back, you know, going around a horizontal line. So we get pi times r squared. Now, that also means this is a little more challenging because your r just became more challenging, right? There's two parts to it. So how do I integrate that? What do I have to do first? I have to FOIL it first, okay? So this here becomes pi from 0 to 4 of 4 minus 4 rad x plus x dx. Remember, this part right here means minus 4x to the 1 half. Okay. So the antiderivative is 4x minus 4x to the, if I add 1 to 1 half, I get 3 halves, right? But then I have to divide by 3 halves, which is kind of ugly. So instead, we do what? Instead of dividing by 3 halves, we multiply by 2 thirds, right? And then plus x squared, evaluate oh, over 2, evaluated from 0 to 4. Pi is still sitting out front. Don't forget that. That is so common to leave that guy off. And guess what? If the answer comes out to like 8 pi and you forgot your pi, they're going to have an answer of 8 waiting there for you. All right? Now, the sight of the pi and one of the answers might go, oh, wait, I just forgot my pi. You know, and so you have to go back and grab it. But it's, it is common, so be ready. Now, what does this mean? This means, let's see, 4x minus 8 thirds times the square root of x cubed plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 4. Whenever you have a negative or a fractional exponent, you really should clean it up before you start plugging your numbers in. It'll just be a little easier on you. All right, so I pi times big, or, or you know, Top minus bottom. Bottom's going to be 0. So we're plugging the 4 in. We get 16 minus. Now, 4 cubed is 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. So I get negative 64 thirds. Or you might do the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is 8 to get the same answer. Either order is fine. And then this is 16 halves, which is 8. So this is 24 minus 64 thirds. So change the 24 into thirds. That gives me like 72 thirds minus 64 thirds. And 72 minus 64 is about 8 thirds pi units cubed. Those are the three most common <laughs> ways that AP will ask it. Really, X and Y axis by far are more asked than a horizontal line. And then there's the vertical line. One time in the past 10 years they've asked a vertical line. Probably not going to happen. Okay. We haven't done a vertical line yet. They'll do the y-axis, but maybe not a vertical line. Last year, we skipped a vertical line. We took our chances and said, we've looked back at these tests. They haven't asked it. Why do we want to, you know, bust any brain cells if we don't have to kind of thing? I don't know what to do with you. Do we take our chance or do we say, well, they might decide to ask it this year, you know? They didn't end up asking it again last year. So I don't know. So I'm going to do it, but I also want to point out to you, if you have 10 minutes to study and you're studying one last problem, I wouldn't have it on this, le this next problem, okay? Probably not where your time would be best spent. All right, so this last one was around the line x equals 4, I think is what it is. So here's our picture, same picture. And that's usually what they do on one like this is they'll have it where 
you already have work for problems, so you already know where they intersect, and you know, that sort of thing. So here is the point um, or two. Oops. And we're going to go around x equals 4. So, is it flush up against to this right here? Does it share that side? No. There's a point, but this here is not pushed up against it, which means washers. Or, if you don't see it, do the mirror image. The mirror image would look like this. And so cross sections of this thing, you can see, are washers. I can't really draw that so good. I will remind you, Khan Academy, the guy on that, he is amazing with his pictures. He draws that washer just perfectly in there. Okay. So if you want to see a, a demonstration that is someone that draws nicely, go and watch him. Okay, I am not afraid to send you to someone that is better than me at drawing. Okay, not at all. All right, so we know that this cross-section is a washer. If it's a washer, then we know our area formula is big R squared minus little r squared. So we need big R and little r. And that's the tough part. So looking at this right here, remember, you're kind of almost, you could turn it, you could turn your paper, so it might be easier to see, okay? Your big R is going from this point that you're going around all the way out to this point right here where you see that radius. So what is that distance from there to there? Four. Your little r is going from this center here to this circle here, which is right at the edge of what's rotating. So how can I get that? All right. How can I get that piece right there? And here's where it might be easier to turn it. It's this distance, this whole distance, minus this part. It is this whole distance minus this part. What's that whole distance again? Four. This part here, remember if it's turned the other way, is what's underneath this graph. So it's four minus, and then of course, I'd have to call this x equals y squared, y squared. So whenever you go around a vertical line, the y-axis or any vertical line, you need to have your equations as x equals. Whenever you're going around a horizontal line, you need to have your equations as y equals. That's the hardest part. Those R's are the, they're, they're the toughest thing that you're going to have. Okay. And so to find the volume, this part here then is, is fine. From 0 to 2, because that's where your Y's are there, is big R squared minus little r squared. From here down, I have faith in you that you can do that part. This would be 16 minus, I have to FOIL this, 16 minus 8y squared plus y to the fourth, which is 16 minus 16 plus 8y squared minus y to the fourth. So you've got some algebra there. The 16s cancel right there. So what we're really integrating 
is this right here. Again, I have faith that you can do the algebra. I have faith that you can take the antiderivative of it. It's getting the setup. Okay, it's that big R and little r. The only way you're going to get it is to practice it. Okay, so 8y cubed over 3 minus y to the 5th over 5 from 0 to 2 times pi. This problem's been nice that all of, you know, all of the second pieces of this are plugging a zero in, so they disappear. So we end up getting 64 thirds minus 32 fifths. Well, some of you will struggle with that. Okay, get a common denominator. So multiply this one by 5 on the top and bottom. Multiply this one by 3 on the top and bottom. So our common denominator is 15. And 5 times 64 is something like 320. And 32 times 3 is like 96. And 320 minus 96 is like 224. Is anybody checking me on these? I'm just pulling these numbers out of the air. Does that reduce? 3 does not go into it, 5 does not go into it, so no, it does not. Okay, units cubed. Okay. What do you think? X-axis, easiest. Y-axis, second easiest. Horizontal line, easier than the vertical line in all cases. Okay, should we do another? X equals 1 and X equals 2. Those are both vertical lines. Yeah, let's not do that one. I'd rather spend my time on the horizontal line. Let's maybe look at this one right here. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by the parabola Y equals X squared. So that one's not too bad. We like y equals x squared. And the line y equals 1. So we have this shaded region right in here. Around the line, y equals 1. That's this guy right here. We first would, should probably know where they intersect. <laughs> 